Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Elizabeth and I'm a kindergarten teacher in California. This video is sponsored by Teachers Connect and if you haven't heard of Teachers Connect, it is a wonderful platform where teachers and educators can go to connect with other teachers and educators. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop a link in the description below. You can click on that link and sign up and join the family. So Teachers Connect sent me five questions to answer from my own experience and own expertise within the classroom setting. So I'm gonna just go through each question and answer them to the best of my knowledge and best of my ability. And the topic today is all about how to reach your students. So each question centers around that topic, how to reach your students. So I'm gonna just go ahead and jump right in. Welcome back. So I'm gonna go ahead and just jump right in. Question one is, what strategies do I use to reach and or motivate my students? I would say one thing that I try and do right from the get-go, from the beginning of the year, is to try and connect with my students on a personal level. So just really getting to know them, building that relationship. Um, once you've built a relationship with them, develop some rapport with them, it's gonna really help build the trust factor between the two of you. That will also help when you, as the teacher, are trying to learn you know, what modality they prefer. There are several different modalities. I'm sure you know them if you're an educator. But if I know, for example, if a student is more of an auditory learner, then that will help me know how to tailor my instruction so that they are given activities that fit that modality, that fit them best, and that will help in, in the end motivate them. Okay, this is a good one. Okay, so question two, I'm gonna look here because it's on my computer, it says, how do you reach and or motivate, <laughs> this is a good one, difficult to reach or misbehaving students? Okay, you have to find what makes them tick. I saw a TED talk, I'll link it down below, but I watched this TED talk once about this woman who was explaining her, um, how she had four daughters and how each daughter was different. And basically she went into this in-depth explanation on the importance of understanding your kids. You know, she was giving this example of herself at a birthday party and how each child was off doing a different thing and really just causing chaos. When she stepped back and looked at her student or her students, her kids, she was able to see that one daughter was a leader and really only needed to be told that she was a leader. So she pulled her aside and she said, honey, you, you are a leader and I want you to basically lead this you know, hide and go seek game because that's the role that you fill. And for that, for that daughter, it really gave her this opportunity to shine in the um, strengths that she had. So I would say if you have a difficult student, we all have those, um, find what makes them tick and use that to your advantage. So if you have a student for example, who likes to blurt out or talk a lot, give them the job in the morning of being the morning greeter. So it's their job to stand by the door and shake everybody's hand and get those words out before the day starts. So I would say just think about your students. I always come at a difficult student with the mindset, with the understanding that if I see a behavior that I don't like, you know, something that maybe is not fitting the classroom, I always just look at them and say, that's just something that they haven't learned yet. If they haven't, you know, if they aren't displaying this, for example, self-control, if they have an issue with self-control, they just simply haven't learned the value of being self-controlled. And so it's my job as the teacher to really help them discover that value. So I would just say, see your students, take out the personal because it can feel like a personal attack at times, especially when you're working so hard to love on them, but you really just have to set that aside and try and see them for who they are and where they're at in their development and really set aside some time to think about what makes them tick. And sometimes it takes a lot of trial and error. You're gonna have time, days that are good, days that are bad. You're gonna feel like there's days where we took two steps back. Um, and then there'll be other days where you, you, see, you see growth. And so I would just say, take the time to get to know your students, build that relationship with them, and, um, and just be patient with the process. You know, consistency is key, and um, I hope that makes sense. All right, question three. How important is it to know each student's backstory? And if it is important, 
how do you get to know them? Okay, so I'm gonna break this up into two different sections. Um, you may have heard that quote where it says, relationships first, everything else second. I think the most important thing that you can do is connect with your students on a personal level. So meaning talk to them about things that interest them. If you have a student who loves, you know, I teach kindergarten. So if I have a student who comes in with Shopkins every day, or if I have a student who has a backpack themed like Superman or Hulk, I can sit down get on their level and, and look them in the eyes and say, hey, do you like Superman? Or, oh, I noticed that you have Shopkins. Which one's your favorite Shopkins? And you can just talk to them on that level, just kind of start developing that relationship with them. And then also understanding their background, I believe is very important because it basically just gives you context um, to know kind of how to approach them. So you can be more sensitive if you have students maybe who come from a broken home or from maybe an adoptive situation or have other situations, ex extenuating circumstances um, going on. It just really helps you, the teacher, know how to respond. So for example, you can avoid topics like even reading literature that would be um, harder for them. Um, so I think it's very important to understand their background. I teach at a private Christian school, so we um, have a pretty tight-knit staff, and it's very important that you, of course, always hold the confidentiality of your students. Um, we actually have rules and things that we have to be very um, mindful of. Um, but we do try to understand where a student or a family is coming from just because it does help with the context in the classroom. Okay, so for example, say you have a student who comes in every Thursday very, very tired. You're noticing this pattern, you're noticing this trend, the student is wanting to sleep at their desk or whatever. It would be a great opportunity for you to pull them aside and just ask them, hey, you know, what did you do last night? Or, you know, did you, did you get good sleep last night? If they're not able to verbalize that or if they don't verbalize that to you, it'd be really great for you to maybe call home and just say, hey, I'm noticing this trend. Every Thursday, a little Johnny comes in and he's very tired. Can you give me some insight into, into why he's doing that or, you know, can you give me some insight into why he might be tired? Um, and you, just that inquiry sometimes will give parents the feeling that you really care and you really love their child. Um, it really helps you two to be more understanding. You may hear something from the parent like, oh yeah, I work you know nights and I don't get home until 10 o'clock and you know little Johnny likes to stay up for me until 10 o'clock because he wants me to tuck him in or something like that. So I think understanding a child's background and understanding where they come from is extremely important because you just get a glimpse into their into their life and when they come to school you can just kind of be an extension of um, help and you know help meet their needs and so I think it's it's really really important this really segues right into question number four which is can relationships with parents help or hurt um, if so do you have any examples? Okay. I'm very fortunate to teach at a school where parents pay for their kids to attend. And in my experience, and I'm only saying that because I feel like in my experience, I typically have parents who want their kids to be here, who are more invested in their child because they pay extra money every month. I mean, we, I'm a private school, you know, we, we, I teach at a private school. So with that said, I'm coming at it from that experience, from that background. And, um, I have a tendency to be very communicative with all of my parents. I send out newsletters every Friday. I use an app, um, for communication with my parents every day. I send pictures to parents every day, videos to parents every day. And I, I ask for responses back and I expect that response back. Um, I reward parents who respond back. So I'll say something like, um, I'll ask a question, for example, Christmas is coming up. So I, I sent out a, a poll for my parents. I said, hey, just wanted to kind of get a feeler. We would love to invite Santa into the classroom to get pictures with the students, but I respect your wishes. If you email me back, yes or no, telling me yes or no, if you'd like your student to get a picture with Santa, I'll give your student 20 po class points. And so that's just a way for me to be, um, you know, to motivate my parents to want to communicate because they're, anytime they communicate with me, their child gets a reward. And so um, I feel like that relationship is vital to the student's success. At the end of every newsletter that I write, I always write, 
partnering with you Mrs. Caller because I feel like I'm just an extension of um, their you know what home is I'm just the educational extension and so I I teach them um, you know math and language and science and social studies but I also am trying to teach them life skills too you know how to share and how to be a good friend and um, how to have character and the importance of all of those um, character traits so having a positive relationship or having a relationship with the parents, whether it be good or bad, um, I think is an important thing because it really just helps you understand the child's background, what the child's hearing at home, kind of helps you know how to approach the child in class. And then if you have a parent who is supportive um, and is willing to partner with you, it just gives you, it just gives that child all the better support. And so I think, I think relationships with parents are absolutely vital. All right, question five. Have you ever planned to see students outside of school activities? How did it go? Give examples. Okay, the answer to this is very simply yes. Um, my husband is also a teacher, and so he and I are actually very active when it comes to um, extracurricular activities. We will go to football games. We, you know, he's, he teaches older students. He, he goes to football games. I go to birthday parties a lot, you know, or gymnastics recitals or plays for students. Pretty much anytime I get an invite from a student, I go to the event just because I feel like it's such a special way for me to support them um, where they will feel loved and feel like I care enough about them outside of the classroom. It's just that way to build that relationship and that rapport with them. And so I absolutely do things out of the classroom. I just went to a birthday party last week. Um, and so I just was there and just to support to the child and to, you know, the other students who were there and students love seeing their teachers outside of class. I mean, I remember when I was younger walking into the grocery store and seeing my you know, third grade teacher and just feeling like you're a real human being. Like you really shop too. You know, it was like, it like blew my mind to see you're out of the classroom. Um, and I think a lot of students feel the same way. So I absolutely do. And I really feel like it's, a great way for you to basically deposit into that student's love tank and support them, um, support them. So I think absolutely you should do as much of that as you possibly can. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put every single question that I responded to um, in the description down below. So there were five questions. I would absolutely love to hear your opinion and your response to each of the questions. Like I said, I come from the background of teaching at a private school. I've been at this school for 10 years and so a lot of my experience in a school setting is in a private school. I know that it's different in other school settings, whether it be charter, homeschooling, public. Um, and so I would love to hear your perspective. If you wanted to copy and paste that into the comments and then write your response to these questions, I would love to read your read your questions. And then also just a reminder, there is a referral link in the description of the video. Teachers Connect is a wonderful platform that you can go to to ask questions to other educators. Um, it's really just a community of educators and teachers. We get together, you can throw a question on the board and they'll answer and respond to it. You can also share ideas. It's really just this platform that you can go to for support. And so we need as much support as we can get in this world. Um, I mean, the teaching world. And so um, it's a really, really great website and great platform. So that referral link is in the description if you want to check that out. I would love to hear your comments. You can also follow me on social media. I will link all of those links down below. Alrighty guys, well that's all I've got for you today. I will go ahead and see you guys in the next video and I promise it won't be a forever wait this time. I have another video coming out next week. So I'll see you guys. See you guys next week. Bye.